Yo, what up? It's Tog from We Make Best back with another Kano video for you guys. This time we're just doing a matchup breakdown of the Kano versus Iceland matchup since I keep getting a lot of comments and questions asking if I could break it down for you guys. Uh, so we actually got two separate games here. Hopefully you learn some things, but let's get into it. Okay, so game one, I win the die roll and choose to put the Icelander first. Icelander starts the game by playing out a Frost Hex, pitching a blue. This is exactly why I believe we won second in this matchup, as now we're able to activate Kano using our Eye of Aphidia. We find a blue on top, along with a Tome of Aetherwind, quickly stack those so the Tome's on top of the blue, and let the Kano activation resolve. We banish the Tome and draw two cards, drawing us into two more blues. We then use our yellow in our hand to Wany Moon them for three. Opponent quickly AB3s it. Now we just sink the rest of our blues into Kano activations and start firing and everything. We find a sap and a scolding range, choose to shoot them both off. The opponent takes this damage, so it looks like they want to keep their last card badly for an arsenal. So we Kano one more time and we find an Aether Flare blue. Rip, we should have done this first. But we end up putting our opponent to 32 to start off the game. They pass over to us, our hand isn't looking too great. I choose to just shoot the red Aether Flare pitching the tome, the opponent AB3s it. So then we pitch the blue to the waning moon to present two more damage and the opponent only AB1s it, pitching a wounded ball. Arsenal our wildfire and pass it over. The opponent sends their second Wounded Ball, this time from Arsenal. Don't mind seeing this, as we're just going to play out this Energy Potion anyway, so we block with two reds in our hand, taking one, and then they ship it over to us. We follow the plan of playing the E-Pot out, but I do a cheeky little move here of just passing. I pass priority here to bait the opponent into playing out their Arsenal, to let me choose between either a bean or firing off my Waning in response. I also didn't mind if they just didn't take the bait and let us pass the turn, as that means I just get to keep this Lessons in hand for future turns. But the opponent falls for the bait anyway and plays out another Frost, Text, I can cleanly AB2 the damage from the frostbites, giving me a valuable alluvian counter. So after this, we just pass it back to them. Their turn, they attack for seven using E Strike. Once again, happy to block out as we have another E Pot in hand, just looking to play this out. After taking one, it's back to us. We simply play out the E Pot, trying to bait the opponent once again. They don't take it this time though, so unlucky, should have just shot the moon. Damn. Opponent's turn now though, and they fire a yellow Aether Ice Vein at us, fused, coming in for four. Lucky for us, we have four AB in our equipment, so we just pitch two blues to AB4 it with two floating for the moon that's gonna follow. This is also perfect for us as it gives us our second Alluvian counter, so we might be able to straight up combo them really soon. They pass it to us, we fire the snap back at them, looking to strip their hand. The opponent is kinda forced to AB3 it, so then we follow up with Waning Moon for two, and then they pitch another blue to AB that out too. Perfect, we've set the trap, now let's see if the opponent wants to fall for it as we pass it over to them. Opponent's turn and they instantly fall for the bait and then they empty their hand to try attack with E-Strike for seven. Even though we have three reds in our hand, E-Pot makes up for all the resources we need in order to do a simple wildfire blazing combo. Link on the screen if you don't know what the combo is as we just released a video breaking it all down. But if you've watched the video already, you probably recognize that I'm just trying to get down to one card in hand in order to ragamuffins our blazing on top of our deck so then we can Kano into it and combo them. So first we activate Kano looking for the middle spell. We end up hitting a Lessons in Lava, which is probably one of the best hits. We pop all our potions, pop our Storm Striders, then fire off a Wildfire, looking to pay Metacarpus. Might as well pop our Alluvian and fire our Waning Moon in response to that, since the Moon doesn't even get buffed by Wildfire anyway. But the opponent's already seen enough and realized they were dead, so they conceded, GG. Game two, this was a little bit of a harder matchup. Uh, this time we lost the die roll and the opponent puts us first. We have a super awkward hand with a potion of deja vu, along with a blazing, a wildfire, and a snapback, all red. I really want to somehow shoot myself with waning or snapback and AB it for the alluvian counter, but can't find a way to efficiently do it while still being able to cast the potion and get an arsenal. So we gotta do the boring play of playing out the depot into pitching our blazing and wildfire to waning moon them. I don't like giving them this free alluvian counter to start the game, but I didn't mind it since we got to stack our combo pieces next to each other for the late game. We then Arsenal the snapback and pass it over. Opponent's turn, they send the Wounded Ball at us. Pretty simple double block using the two non-gaze cards in our hand in order for us to do some swag plays next to them. So we take one and then they ship it back. Our turn, we get to do the pretty fun line here. That being responding to our own gaze using the snapback from Arsenal, pitching our second gaze. We do this to meet the requirements for both cards to gain their special effects from each other value. The opponent then responds to the snapback by playing out a frost hex from Arsenal, giving us a frostbite. We have an interesting choice here as we could respond with the waning moon just to maximize the damage. 
but I actually choose to let the frostbite resolve and then eat it using one of the two floating and the gaze to activate Kano, which essentially gains us one health and hopefully hits a red one cost to really punish the opponent. So we do this and we hit the jackpot by opting into a red quickening, probably the best red one cost spell. So we opted on top, pitch the gaze into Kano and then use the one floating to shoot them for four. They don't AB it, so they take four down to 29. No arsenal, but I'm happy with this turn cycle. So we pass it over to them. Their turn, they go empty handed to play an E strike for draw a card. We have a wildfire in hand and a D pot out. So we have to check here if there's a line to let us kill them. I think ultimately the lack of blue cards in our hand made me shy away from it since we simply won't have enough resources to play the wildfire into Sonic, which we can make hit another Sonic into one more spell, which could probably be lethal. Hard luck, we choose to just take five and let them arsenal. Back to us, we choose to shoot off wildfire for four damage off of one of the Sonic booms in hand, then using the other Sonic boom to shoot it, shoot them with Wainy Moon. All up, we're presenting six damage. The opponent only pitches five all up, so they end up taking one, pass it over to them. They're in this weird awkward spot again where I'm guessing they're scared to die as they just pass the turn back to us. I have a quick think if we want to fire the Cinderine off in hopes to try and kill them, but since we know one wildfire is at the bottom of our deck from turn zero and one is now in our discard, the chances of a good hit off the op three is very low, so I choose to just keep as much tempo as we can by accepting the pass turn and playing out a five card hand. So back to us, always play your action before anything else, so we, so we tome, choosing to draw two cards. Opponent has no responses, so we draw up two more blues. Time to sink some cards in the Kano. We hit a Blessings off the top first. That's a big hit. This card is super strong to force over damage in this matchup. So we play that off of a blue and use the two floating to shoot them with Wainy Moon as well. We take the two down to 26. We still got some blues, so let's Kano again. We hit big again, so we hit a Blessings in Lava this time and fire that. Opponent is pretty forced to AB3 this, or they might get punished by letting us tutor. So that's what they do. That's fine. Let's Kano one more time. But this time the opponent responds with an Emeritus Scolding into a Wainy Moon for seven damage all up. I'm feeling pretty frisky right now though, so I choose to only AB1 and keep one floating. Have to AB1 though, just to gain that Alluvian counter as they're so important for the matchup. And now we're just hoping for a one cost red off the top to trade some help. Kano into a blue Scolding. I guess at least it was a one drop lol. But we'll just use the floating now to shoot him for two more damage, then pass it over. Opponents still respecting the fact that they might die if they play anything out, so they'll just try to pass back, but we've got some interesting choices here. In our hand, we see we have a Tome of Fiendel, which is extremely important to get into our arsenal for this matchup, but currently we have a Cindering Foresight in there taking up the space. We also have this Blessings that's going to pop next turn, so we really need to get value from that as well, as I only run one. With all this in mind, I choose to just cast the Cindering from Arsenal in their turn to clear space for my Tome, as well as set up the top cards of my deck for my next turn. So we opt three, seeing a Sonic Boom and some Blues. Keen to Kano into that Sonic for the next turn to get buffed by the Blessings of Aether. So chuck that at the top and then we bottom both the Blues, hoping for a better hit for the Sonic. Then finally we let them pass the turn back to us. So now it's our turn. Our Blessings pops. We Kano into that Sonic Boom that we know about and fire it for 6 at the opponent. Opponent only AB3s it, taking 3 and giving us the on hit. We boom into an Aether Dart. Eh, whatevs. Might as well shoot that as well for 1 damage. They actually pitch a Wounded Ball to AB1 that as well. So that tells me they might have a full red hand or something right now. So I choose to just shoot the moon with my last blue instead of gambling with a Kano activation. And then they take it. Free damage. We end the turn by arsenaling this tome. So it's looking real good for us. Opponent's turn, they go shields down right now. Unlucky for us, we have a really bad hand. We can't really look to punish. Because not only do we have a tome of Fiendo in our arsenal, we also have no blues in our hand as well as two more tomes all together. Very annoying to see as you can see my mouse wigging out for that. <laughs> Anyways, nothing we can do. We just block this out. We just block out the East drag using our nourishing and us blazing sadly, take one and then they pass it back. Our turn, we just pitch a tome, the player tome from Arsenal, gain three health. We draw a blue and a wildfire. So let's pitch the blue and find a flare on top. It's a little bit awkward since I want to use our resources efficiently here. So I actually choose to keep it on top and use the wildfire to pitch to our moon with the floating just to present two more damage at the opponent. They quickly AB it out. So we just arsenal our second tome of Fiendel and pass it over. Opponent's turn, they fire a red Aether Ice Vein at us fused with a channel leg. So we know it's gonna be painful for the next couple turns. We choose to just AB one it using a blue and using the two floating to pay for the effect just to gain the Alluvian counter and let us keep cards in our hand since we know a channel leg's coming. So we end up losing four health and then they pass it over to us. So now it's our turn. We play the tome from Arsenal, pitching a red. The opponent responds with the channel leg that we know about, giving us a frostbite. But now we respond to the frostbite by activating Alluvian, making it so our, wa our waning moon costs three less until the end of turn. We then let the frostbite resolve and then respond to the channel leg to shoot the moon for free because the frostbite makes it cost three. But since it's three cheaper this turn, it's still four free and lets us eat that frostbite for free, essentially gaining us a health. So big value there. 
Opponent takes the two. Don't know why they don't just AB one it. But anyway, let's draw two and gain four from the tome. We draw a red flare and a blue. So let's pitch them to the Kano, hoping for something to help us pressure them. We hit a tome that costs one, pretty sad. But we play that out, draw two reds, but at least one of them's a snapback, so whatever. Let's shoot it at the opponent, try to strip their ice cards so the channel they can die sooner. They AB the snapback, so then we just look to Arsenal the E-Pot. Real quickly, I chose the Arsenal the E-Pot over the lesson because the E-Pot is up there with Tome of Fiendo as one of the most important cards for the matchup. And since we already pitched one earlier, I really wanted to get this one online. And you'll see why soon that this was an important decision. So we pass it over to them. They pitch an ice card to attack with Fiendo's Fighting Spirit. Since we got the E-Pot, we're pretty happy to just block out using two blues, keep in the last blue to pay for the e pot through channel lake so now we go to our turn we do exactly that then just arsenal the lessons and ship it back to them opponent's turn they cast an ice eternal for eight so four frostbites coming in along with a moon for two but only one ice card in there so the channel's gonna die so overall i really don't care especially since we have another e pot to just play through all the frostbites so back to us just pitch four to play out the e pot pass it back once again feeling very confident that we have this game in the bag now since we still have plenty of health and now we have a board full of potions Opponent's turn, they have a pretty weak one. They're just playing out an Insidious Chill and passing. I'll gladly take the opportunity to play a five card hand next turn, so all good. Let's go back to ours. Our turn, we start with lessons from Arsenal, pitching an eye. I didn't notice at first, but we're actually at our pitch stack from the start of the game, where we pitched this blazing in our hand and this wildfire that we see from the op together to Wainy Moon, our opponent on turn zero, if you remember correctly. So we keep the wildfire on top along with the blue, and now we're just looking to strip the opponent's hand as much as we can to look for the finish next turn. We use the two floating from, from the eye to shoot him with the Wainy Moon as well. Opponent responds with the Polar Blast from Arsenal, and then we respond to that with a snapback for three as an instant. Letting it all resolve, they take the three from the snapback, then fire their Wainy at us. We have two random resources floating, so happy to AB two. Then the opponent pitches a Heart of Fiendo to AB our Wainy Moon, letting them net gain one health. Pretty good though, since we just Arsenal this Blazing and pass it over. Opponent's only got two cards in hand, and then they try to play out an E-Pot. It's time to go. So we respond to it, looking to do a Wildfire Blazing combo. Link on the screen again if you haven't seen our vid on how to do this but anyway we blind kano into sonic one of the best hits in the deck pitch another blue to storm striders respond to that by activating kano and now responding to that as well by activating ragamuffin since we've only got the wildfire in hand this lets us put the wildfire on top of our deck and then we can let the kano activation resolve banishing the wildfire that we just put there we then just crack all our potions and fire the wildfire with metacarpus opponent ab3s it to take two we then shoot the sonic boom for six with metacarpus as well they take six we hit a gaze so we get to cast the gaze for free we gaze and find a blue flare on top so we put that to the top kano into it using the gaze and now using the last two resources we got we play the blue flare with metacarpus and that hits for four as well then we just activate alluvian to shoot them for an extra three damage with wainy moon for free and finally let the storm striders resolve and fire our blazing to end it off with a 36 damage combo through ab3 ggs so that's it for the Kano Icelander matchup breakdown video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll leave a link to the deck list down in the description if you guys want to test that out. Also leave a link to our Patreon that we just recently opened. Um, on there, there is going to be an, another Icelander video that's going to be Patreon exclusive, which is how to beat an Icelander when playing from behind. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. But besides that, much love. Thank you for watching all the way through. See you guys next time.